Greetings, everyone. Sabal Fulg. Welcome to the Grand Egyptian Museum. Mahram bikum fil Mataf al Masrik Kabir. As you probably heard by now, there have been some exciting updates about the progress that's been made on the gym. I've got some key critical insider updates for you on those updates, and I'm going to share those with you in this video. I have a little bit different opinion about the common wisdom in terms of when the gym might be opening. So I'm going to share that, and I'm going to share my reasoning behind that, as well as show you what else has opened in 2024 as we head into the end of winter and early spring. Let's go take a look. Exterior and interior common areas of the Grand Egyptian Museum are open. This includes the eastern exterior courtyard, the north exterior courtyard, the north interior atrium, and the interior grand central atrium, which is the largest public space inside of the museum. When you arrive at the gym, the first area you'll encounter is the initial security screening area. Once you're past this, you'll find the ticket windows off to your left, although it's highly advisable that you book your entrance tickets in advance online. You can scan both printed tickets and mobile tickets at the automated ticket turnstiles, after which you'll find yourself in the eastern exterior courtyard. The main feature of this first courtyard is a large obelisk that has been suspended above the ground on a special pedestal. This obelisk is now referred to as the Hanging Obelisk, and it serves as both a meeting point for groups and as the starting point for group tours given by the museum staff. Next, as you walk towards the museum building and enter the gym through the main pyramid-shaped entrance, you'll enter the Grand Atrium. Here you'll find the museum's main information desk, as well as an enormous statue of Ramses II, or Ramses the Great, towering over the entire atrium. This colossal statue serves not only an impressive welcoming and awe-inspiring function as visitors first enter the building, but it is also a memorable meeting point for families and groups. Beyond the giant Ramses statue, You'll also notice two additional ancient pharaonic statues placed side by side just beyond the entrance to the official museum gift shop. These appear to be of a Ptolemaic era king and queen, although we don't know for sure which specific ancient royals these statues represent. The gym's official gift shop is also fully open and operational and is located just off the grand atrium. Unlike most museum gift shops, which contain generic and predictable souvenirs, the GEMS gift shop is stocked with an extremely well-curated collection of unique, high-quality memorabilia, collectibles, gifts, and books related to the museum's collections. Now, I'm normally not a huge fan of museum gift shops. As we all know, they're usually chock full of cheap trinkets and cheesy souvenirs, and the merchandise is usually fairly low quality, or it's decent quality, but severely overpriced. That's not the case at all with the official gift shop in the gym. They not only have a lot of really unique and high quality items, but it's all priced very reasonably. The gym is leading the way in what a good museum gift shop should look like, and it's definitely worth checking out while you're there. On the far side of the gift shop, or on your left if you're looking at the gift shop's entrance from the Grand Atrium, you'll find the start of the gym's main dining corridor, lined with a variety of upscale, casual restaurants and cafes. Anyone who lives in Egypt will recognize most of the food and beverage brands represented here, such as Zuba, 30 North, and Laudere. However, 
everyone will recognize the international brands that have been invited to open cafes inside of the gym, including one of the most ubiquitous. As you can see though, not all of the available commercial food and beverage spaces have been filled, so expect more restaurants and cafes to open in the coming months. Similarly, there are several commercial retail spaces that have yet to open in the adjacent interior avenues for shops and boutiques. But most are already open, many of which have been operating continuously since the trial visits program began last year. The retail corridors within the gym run both perpendicular and parallel to the main restaurant's avenue. Again, many of these brand names will be familiar to most Egyptians, but new and unique for foreign visitors. However, the companies and brands that have been invited to set up shop in the coveted retail spaces within the Grand Egyptian Museum are among the finest in Egypt. So far, we've only talked about what's on the ground floor of this first section of the massive gem complex. But above the official gift shop, restaurants, cafes, and retail stores are more rooms, halls, and even theaters that are designed to house interactive and cinematic exhibitions. One of these halls was opened in late 2023 for the King Tutankhamun Immersive Exhibition, a half hour animated ancient Egyptian themed show designed by a European digital storytelling company that is displayed on large LED walls. This is Kemet, the Black Land, land of the pyramids and the Sphinx. While this digital show is more of a treat for kids to immerse themselves for a while in the art and ambiance of ancient Egypt, with a focus on the images and story of Egypt's most famous teenage pharaoh, it is somewhat entertaining for adults too, at least the latter part of it, when there is more of a focus on historical and archival content. The Sahara Desert was to give up some of its most cherished secrets to modern-day mankind in 1922. In the shadows of the silent states and the giant pyramids, an English archaeological expedition headed by a man named Howard Parker sought to uncover the tomb of an ancient Egyptian hero, King Tutankhamun. The King Tutankhamun immersive exhibition was initially scheduled to only run through late February, but due to its popularity as something extra to do within the new museum during the trial visits phase, the gym announced that it would be extending the show for another three months through the end of May. Admission to the King Tut immersive exhibition is included with the general admission ticket for the gym, but you must select a specific time slot for the show when you book your gym ticket. Note that this special exhibition is not the King Tut artifacts collection. The major treasures from his tomb are still at the old Egyptian museum in downtown Cairo, and they will be moved to the gym when it is ready to fully open. So to reiterate, while the on-site ticket office at the Grand Egyptian Museum is fully open and operational, it is still best and highly advisable to get your tickets in advance online. If you wait until the day you want to visit the gym to get your tickets for the gym, or if you just show up at the gym with plans to buy your tickets on site, you could find that your preferred time slot for the immersive show is already sold out, since the room can only safely hold a certain number of people. Since the exact website where you can buy gym tickets and book time slots for the immersive show online is a little complicated and unusual, and many people who come across it on their own actually question whether or not it's legitimate or it's the right booking page. You can always just remember to go to grandegyptianmuseum.org, and if you scroll down to the homepage, you'll find a trustworthy link to get to the right place to book your Grand Egyptian Museum general admission tickets online, and to select the preferred time slot for the immersive exhibition as well. So again, for the sake of simplicity, you can always go to grandegyptianmuseum.org and here on the homepage, you'll be able to find the legitimate link to book official admission tickets for the ongoing trial visits program at the Grand Egyptian Museum.
Now let's venture back inside of the gym and continue exploring the newest parts of the museum that have been added to the trial visits program, as well as what's still off limits until the grand opening. As you may have heard back in our December 2023 update on the gym, the previously off limits grand staircase has now been opened up to not only photograph, which was forbidden for some inexplicable reason, but to actually access and walk on and explore, all the way up to and including the giant glass windows that form the museum's southern facade, which look out over the neighboring pyramids of Giza. As you ascend the gem's grand staircase, you'll be able to get up close and personal with dozens and dozens of well-preserved, large, ancient statues depicting pharaohs, gods, goddesses, as well as various obelisks, stelae, and sarcophagi that have been unearthed throughout Egypt and meticulously cleaned and restored in the museum's new state-of-the-art conservation labs. While these labs remain off-limits to the public and very likely will remain off-limits even after the museum fully opens, the privilege of visiting the new artifact conservation labs has traditionally been a part of the very pricey VIP tour offered by the museum to help raise funds to cover its operational costs. As of the last update, these VIP tours carried a hefty price tag of over $2,000 per person. And the only additional areas covered by them that are still not open on the trial visits program now are the conservation labs and the restoration hangar for King Khufu's second funerary boat, which is being meticulously pieced back together by a team of Japanese-led archaeologists in a special off-limits area behind the gym. I've been inside of both the conservation labs and the second Khufu boat restoration hangar before. And while it's certainly fascinating to see the behind-the-scenes archaeological restoration work in action, the decision of whether it's worth the hefty price tag is a personal one. However, if the chance to see the behind-the-scenes work in person is an opportunity that you feel you just can't pass up, please feel welcome to reach out to me at john at egyptelite.com. That's J-O-H-N, john at egyptelite.com. And I'd be more than happy to tell you more about how to book these behind-the-scenes VIP tours of the Grand Egyptian Museum. For those who have mobility issues or just don't want to climb that many stairs, there is a slow-moving escalator that moves up and down along the western side of this area that allows you to stand in one place as you slowly float by all the statuary placed throughout the staircase. There's also an inclined elevator that takes you all the way to the top of the staircase for those using wheelchairs or scooters. As you go up the various levels of the grand staircase, here is where you will begin to also notice what is not yet open at the Grand Egyptian Museum. Off to the sides of the landings along the way up the grand staircase are the access points to the museum's main artifact galleries and exhibition halls. However, as you can see, these areas remain closed and strictly off limits, even to the behind the scenes VIP tours. While thousands upon thousands of artifacts covering all periods of Egypt's history have already been installed within these yet to open main galleries and exhibition halls, that absolutely does not mean that there's nothing left to see in the old Egyptian museum in downtown Cairo while the world still is waiting for the new Grand Egyptian Museum to open. The most famous golden treasures of King Tut, as well as thousands more ancient artifacts that are very much worth seeing and equally comparable to the other artifacts that are already installed in the gym, remain on display in the old Egyptian museum in downtown Cairo. If you're curious or worried about what a visit to the old Egyptian museum looks like now, be sure to watch the recent video here on the Egypt Travel Channel entitled, What's Left in the Old Egyptian Museum? So now let's conclude this video update by talking briefly about the latest intel on when the Grand Egyptian Museum might finally fully open to the public. Rumors abounded online at the beginning of the year that it might open in late February, 
which obviously did not happen. However, those were neither credible rumors nor informed rumors. So February was not another case of, they said it would likely open again, but then it didn't. Informed sources, such as yours truly, were never banking on February to begin with, or even March or April, to be honest. This is what the grounds here still looked like during that period, with some infrastructure construction still ongoing outside of the gym's perimeter on the main access highway in front of the complex, and also some finishing work on some adjacent buildings within the complex too. In this case, the building behind the main museum building that will house the first Khufu funerary boat that used to reside inside of the now deconstructed Solar Boat Museum hangar at the pyramids. While I firmly believe that the government of Egypt very much would have liked to have opened the museum back in November or December of last year as previously predicted, Unfortunately, the optics of holding a lavish grand opening ceremony with scores of global dignitaries in attendance for a celebratory affair, while at the same time the conflict between Israel and Hamas was raging next door in Gaza, was almost certainly an unavoidable non-starter for the government of Egypt. Just like COVID was unforeseeable and completely out of Egypt's control in 2020 and 2021, The conflict going on next door, while not at all spilling over into Egypt, thankfully, has nevertheless derailed many fourth quarter 2023 and first quarter 2024 development plans in neighboring countries throughout the region. So I honestly do believe that the gym could have been finished and opened by the end of 2023 as expected, and I believe as planned originally. But alas, Politics, optics, and outside schedules often impact these types of things in ways that Egypt simply just cannot control. But if you'll recall from the last Gym Updates video in December, Egypt's Minister of Tourism, Ahmed Issa, spoke candidly to CNN's Richard Quest late last year and told him that he expected the gym to open sometime between the beginning of 2024 and May of 2024. And what I read into the minister's remarks was that they basically were ready and eager to open the gym as soon as the international political situation would allow, considering both optics and scheduling, and honestly, basic human compassion for what's going on outside of Egypt's borders, but within the same region. Given the fact that the holy month of Ramadan took place this year, between mid-March and mid-April, It was also certain that we would not see the gym open during this time either, when most Egyptians and other regional dignitaries that Egypt wants to attract to attend a grand opening ceremony all want to be spending time at home with their own families in their own countries celebrating Ramadan. But after the very next set of major holidays here, which is the Eid Festival that's going on now to mark the end of Ramadan, followed by the Coptic Christian Easter, which is different from the Western Easter, and this year falls in early May. It seems logical that the next four to eight weeks after all of those back-to-back holiday periods wrap up would finally be an ideal time for Egypt's president to host an official grand opening ceremony for the gym and finally throw open the doors of all of its galleries and exhibitions to the world. So now you have a better understanding of why They really just could not open the gym over the winter for unforeseen circumstances. And now you know the full major holiday schedule here in Egypt throughout the spring that made March and April a no-go period for the opening as well. But starting in May, after the Coptic Easter is wrapped up, the calendar is looking wide open. And that, combined with the tourism minister's remarks a few months ago about expecting to see an opening by the end of May, This all makes us very hopeful that you'll finally be able to explore all of this incredible new museum very soon. Stay tuned to the Egypt Travel Channel here on YouTube for more announcements and updates as they come in. And be sure you're subscribed to the grand opening announcement email list on grandegyptianmuseum.org if you want to be the first to know when the world's most awaited museum opening in more than a century is finally, officially 
announced. 